Well, we will go ahead and get started. We would like to welcome the winner of the 2023 John Deere Classic, Sepp Straka. Sepp, congratulations on your victory today. Very convincing, nine under 62 to get the job done in the final round, especially given I've heard everybody talk a lot about where you started from after round one. So just amazing. Just a few opening thoughts on how it feels to collect that win. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty awesome. Uh, like you said, I didn't think I'd be sitting here on, on Thursday. Uh, after the round and uh, just found some magic and, and started hitting the ball really good, which I did on Thursday too, but really started making some putts. And I think that's, that's a key out here. Uh, you gotta get the potter hot and thankfully it stayed hot. Was there a big difference uh, today? Did you find something yesterday? Was it a mindset or was just things just kind of go your way today? Uh, a little bit of a tweak in the setup. Um, my toe was getting up a little bit. Tim Yelverton, who I work with on putting, texted me on Thursday night and. So my toe was sticking up a little bit, so I just got the hands a little higher, flattened that thing out, and uh, and yeah, uh, started started online and got hot. And one last question for me, and then we'll open it up for questions. Uh, with the win, you moved to 18 in the FedEx Cup, 27 in the official World Golf Ranking. What does this do for you? You may not have had a chance to fully process it yet, but what does this do just kind of with your mindset as you're looking forward to the busy, uh, big part of the season coming up? Uh, yeah, it's great. It's always good to be uh, playing good golf uh, towards the end of the season. Uh, one of the big goals is always to make it to Atlanta, and this is a big uh, step towards that. And uh, hopefully I can build off of this and just uh, just keep it going. Okay. Well, we'll take some questions. Start with George. Your fellow Bulldog, Brendan, and Alex both had very high praise for your round, and why not? You shattered a 41-year record for a closing round here that was held by the late Payne Stewart. Don't know if you're aware of that. Did not know. No. How exciting was that? Uh, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, I knew somebody was going to make a push today. Uh, the birdies are out there. The wind was down a little bit compared to yesterday. And, um, and yeah, thankfully, I, I, I had a really good ball striking day and uh, had a hot putter going. So I just tried not to think about uh, any of the uh, situation too much because I was so far ahead of the leaders and just try to keep making birdies. What does it feel like to finish early and go to the driving range and wonder for a while? It's stressful. <laughs> it's very stressful because uh, at that point it's out of your hands. You know, when you're on the course, obviously you're really nervous, but you have control of the situation. And then when you're just sitting there, uh, you kind of feel helpless. So uh, once I got on the range and started warming up for a potential playoff, I, I started feeling a little better. And, uh, yeah, thankfully didn't need that playoff. So how quickly were you able to – throw the 18th hole out of your mind while you were waiting. That seems to be the kind of thing that would just hang over a guy. Uh, pretty quickly, you know, I hit one bad shot. Uh, honestly, after that, the recovery, the wedge shot was great after that uh, shot into the green. Uh, hit a really good number and hit a really good putt and just broke a little more than I thought. So, uh, you know, I, I gave myself a lot, of, a lot of grace there because uh, that was my only real bad shot of the day. Uh, so, yeah, I, I didn't dwell on it too much. Greg? Um, you, you mentioned um, in the TV interviews that you, you weren't focused on, on the, the Holy Grail there, the 59, um, when you were standing in the fairway. Um, not a thought ever? Uh, uh, no, today? it popped in my mind for sure, yeah. Uh, but I wasn't going to change my game plan or strategy for, for the 59. Uh, the goal was still to, to keep the same game plan and, and try to finish and, and win a golf tournament. So. Uh, as fun as a 59 would be, I think winning the golf tournament is always uh, is always more fun. Did you feel like you needed a birdie to close it, or or um, were you was? I didn't know. You know, I was so far ahead of the leaders. They had so much, so many holes to play. Somebody could have gotten hot. Uh, I had no clue. I was just trying to hit my hit my target, hit my number, and uh, just hit a, made a bad swing on on 18, but then recovered nicely and unfortunately missed the putt. But um, but yeah, uh, I didn't really know. To be at 11 under with. Uh... With 17 in front of you, you, what were your expectations after you after you reached that that figure? Yeah, the goal on 17 is always to make birdie, uh, especially with that pin. It was pretty gettable. Um, I hit a really good drive off the tee. The wind was off the left, so just to keep it in the first cut there was really nice. And then made a really good swing on my second shot that just uh, kicked right in the bunker. Um, decent bunker shot and uh, just hit a good putt and misread it a little bit. But uh, but yeah, like I said, I was just uh, trying to execute the game plan. Okay, last one for me. Do you, do you really have to pay for the house now? And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, they're not letting me off the hook there. <laughs> and how much is that, that house going to go for on Airbnb next year, right? I, 
two, I don't two know. for two, huh? I don't know. I hope JT uh, went ahead and renewed before this. So. <laughs> Sepp, uh, how would you envision celebrating this victory, and who are you most excited to share this big day with? Uh, definitely my wife. Uh, excited to get back to her. Um, and, yeah, tonight, I don't, I don't know, just through the media, I have, I have no, no idea. My agent is here, so I'm sure he's planning something for me. Um, but, yeah, to get back to my wife would be, be great. And how about the, your weekend here, just the, the feeling with the, with the fans here and the, the whole setup here at TPC Deer Run? It's amazing. Uh, it's you know they've it's been here for so long. They've they've got it down. Uh, they run such a good event. The golf course is in great shape. Um, the volunteers are all extremely helpful and uh, just one of the more smoothly run events on tour. And uh, yeah, look forward to coming back. Craig, Sepp, uh, you, you were born in Austria, but uh, you grew up in Georgia, and you know you sound more Georgian than than Austrian. Let's, uh, Only when I'm speaking English. Yeah. <laughs> are you are you more uh, are you more of a country music fan than you would be of Beethoven or string music or Austrian? Probably Beethoven's a little bit before my time, uh, but I'm more of a Mozart guy for uh, being uh, picking there. But um, but yeah, I listen to that too. Uh, but yeah, probably more of a country country music than than the classic. But music notwithstanding, the time you've been in Georgia since you were 14 years old, went to Georgia. Um, do you, are you as American as you are Austrian in, in a sense? You know, I used to say I'm 50% Austrian, 50% American, and a, a friend of mine who's Austrian, Clemens, uh, corrected me one day and said you're 100% Austrian, 100% American. So, yeah, there's no, uh, it, it's, it's, you can't really pick between the two. I'm part of, uh, they're both part of my, uh, my upbringing, and uh, yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world. The 100% Austrian could be competing in the uh, Ryder Cup in Europe. Is that a thought now with this victory in hand? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, September's a, a few months away, and uh, I'm glad my game's in, in good shape, so uh, hopefully I can, I can make a push for that. George? In your wildest dreams, did you ever anticipate being a widely successful opening act for Blake Shelton? <laughs> 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 is that what they're all here for? <laughs> um, I didn't even know he was playing, to be honest with you. Uh, I knew there was a concert. I didn't know it was Blake Shelton. So, uh, yeah, might have to hang around for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. What, what was going through your mind when you're standing over the approach shot on 18, the second shot yeah. on 18? I mean, you know, you... You say you weren't thinking necessarily 59, but what was going through your mind at that point? Yeah, I was just uh, trying to hit my target. We had picked out a good number, uh, and I think the number-wise I executed, I hit the ball really solid, uh, but I just, I just pulled it uh, way left of my target. But, yeah, I was just trying to hit my, hit my target about seven, eight yards right of the pin and let it feed in there. Um, and uh, once it started going left with the wind off the right, it was never going to come back. So... Um, so yeah, it was, it was an unfortunate time for a bad swing, but thankfully it didn't didn't hurt me. What was the distance? What was the block? It was uh, there's a few numbers we got, hole number, carry number, and then I don't know. I think the hole was 180 ish, 85 maybe, 80, yeah, something like that. Uh, eight iron. Yeah, I was trying to pitch it about seven yards short of the pin uh, and right of it. Matt, right under the light here. For those of us who will never get in that type of zone you were in through 17 holes, what was that just like, you know, shot after shot, racking birdie after birdie up as you're going through that round? It was crazy because you just uh, – you don't want to think about it too much because you, you don't want to, uh, you know, lose the feeling. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I was hitting, uh, hitting the ball really well. I don't think the, the ball striking was – as uh, out of this world as the putting. The putting was just phenomenal. I was reading the greens really well. Some really tough putts that I, that I put a good read on and uh, was just locked in on my speed and my line. Can you remember a time, the last time you were that dialed in, locked in like that? Maybe Friday. <laughs> 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 I got pretty hot on Friday too. So uh, yeah, it happened, happened twice this week probably. Uh, but yeah, probably, probably not quite as locked in as I was today, but. Uh, but, yeah, it doesn't happen very often, so when it does, you just got to kind of go with it. 
Craig? I, I just want to get this lady some exercise. <laughs> so, um, growing up, did, was, did you envision yourself uh, sitting in the winner's circle for a second time? And, and what are your expectations? I mean, um, how do you view yourself in the PGA Tour pantheon, the spectrum? Um, you feel like you can compete with anybody out here? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, one thing I've tried to work on a lot and have done a better job of is being more consistent um, in my practice and that translating into tournaments. Uh, and But at my best, I do feel like I can compete with anybody. Um, obviously, uh, I, the last three days, I could have competed with just about anybody in the world. And uh, But growing up, I never would have thought I would have a chance to even play on the PGA Tour. Uh, this is all just a, a big dream come true. Uh, I never really had a whole lot of confidence in myself growing up. Uh, I always was around really good players. My brother was a little better than me. Uh, my class in high school uh, was full of really good players. Uh, and uh, so I never really had uh, a lot of success early on and uh, never would have even dreamt of playing here, let alone winning, winning twice on the PGA Tour. Going forward, knowing your Thursday round and where you're sitting right now, how will that help you in the tournaments down the road, knowing maybe a shaky start, but just stay at it? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, anytime you play a tournament, you get in contention, you, you find out something new, and uh, that, that uh, experience is invaluable. Uh, so just knowing that, you know, I was in 130-something place after the first round and uh, ended up winning, you know, you just can't ever uh, really count yourself out because you could just get hot any moment. All good. All right. We've